Hello and welcome to Music Fest. We're happy to be part of this eclectic mix of artists, vendors, and supporters such as yourself. I'm Mark Love here at the Sabian Factory. Thanks for tuning in. Here in 2022, Sabian is celebrating our 40th anniversary. Our brand's foundation was built on the idea of providing drummers new and interesting sounds and concepts, breaking barriers, and motivating players across the globe to go out and create something truly unique. Those principles established back in 1982 are still at the forefront of our mission to this day. Over the years, we've ushered in new concepts and designs that have propelled modern symbol making to where it is today and where it is heading tomorrow. From pinpoint lathing to punching holes across the bow to producing the world's first truly EQ'd symbol. The goal was simple, innovate and inspire. Along the way, we've created millions of symbols engineering new designs and production techniques. Drawing on those 40 years of experience, we're excited to announce the launch of the 40th 22-inch Raw Bell Artisan Ride. This ride combines the mastery of generations past and the modern creativity of today to create this ultimate ride with the ultimate sound. For a bit more information on this ultimate ride, I'd like to pass it over to our president, Mr. Andy Zildjian. To celebrate our 40th anniversary with you, we have crafted the ultimate ride. We believe the best celebration of our 40th is to launch a limited edition 22 inch artisan raw bell ride. A collector's item that embodies 40 years of our legendary Sabian innovation. With every sale, we will be giving a portion of the proceeds to charity. Your symbol will be numbered and signed by the artisan that made your symbol, not only giving you a direct connection with the person who made your symbol, but also making it even more of a collector's item. Keep your ears open for it. We hope you are as excited as we are to celebrate 40 years of Sabian. For more on this ride or any of our symbol selections, be sure to reach out to your rep at Interstate Music today. Thanks for stopping by and check back later for some exciting new features. Hello and welcome back to Music Fest. We hope you were able to catch the feature on the 40th anniversary Artisan Raw Bell ride earlier. In addition to the Ultimate Ride, one of the major launches we saw this year was the HHX Anthology series, developed and designed with Jojo Mayer. Anthology embraces creation and individuality, featuring three sizes, 14, 18, and 22. Designed with either a low bell or high bell option, what's more, the larger size 18 inch and 22 options are categorized only as symbols, not rides or crashes. They are versatile, providing you a tone and voice that will sit perfectly in any mix or situation. Now the anthology was developed long distance due to COVID. So Jojo and our R&D team had to go back and forth many times. It, it really lengthened the project, but at the end of the day, we were very happy with the end result. For a bit more on the anthology series, We'd like to pass it over to the man himself, Jojo. Please stick around until the end for a full playthrough on this wonderful collection of symbols. Anthology symbols come in two lines, low bell and high bell versions. It's ultimately up to you which characteristics works best for your way of playing. 
The low bell version creates more of a controlled sound that leans towards a traditional, sensitive and elegant aesthetic. The high bell version adds more amplitude to the sound, which leans towards a more contemporary, bold and projecting vibe. Anthology hi-hats are designed to perfectly complement their big companions. The low bell version provides silky warm tones and precise and sensitive footwork. The high bell version provides tight stick definition, fat barks, and a massive sound from the foot. Anthology cymbals combine the loose and buttery feel of thinner cymbals with the projection of heavier cymbals. And talking of weights, each cymbal weight is measured and inscribed inside the bell to distinguish its individual properties.
One of the most common subjects we're asked about revolve around how to decide what sound is right, what symbol is right for you. We'd be lying if we said it was an easy answer. There are so many variables as it relates to size, profile, thickness, production techniques that have a direct effect on the sound of each symbol in our vault. However, there are certain elements to look for when shopping. For more insight on this subject, we direct you to Jojo Mayer who has graciously shared his wealth of insight on this very topic. We hope it is helpful. Thanks again to you and to Interstate Music for hosting this event. We hope to hear from you soon. Hi, Jojo Mayer here. Choosing and testing a new symbol is a lot of fun, but it can also be overwhelming and confusing sometimes for reasons that I will explain. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few pointers that I've been using throughout the years when uh, looking for a new symbol or testing symbols or comparing symbols that helped me to kind of zero in on the symbol that was right for me. All right, I'm gonna show this today with uh, some 18-inch anthology symbols, but obviously everything that I'm saying today, uh, you can apply to just about any symbol that might spark your interest. All right, so the first thing, uh, usually you're gonna find a new symbol at like a music store, you know, music stores, have those displays of like walls of symbols. It's a good idea to take the symbol that you're interested in away from that wall because those walls are full of sympathetic vibrations that really can deviate or confuse the sound of the symbols. You know, because everything is vibrating and you really want to hear that symbol that you're interested in in all right so to so ask the story cleric for the courtesy of like putting that symbol away from other symbols all right that that would be really helpful and it'd be a good start also um be aware of uh reflecting surfaces as like nearby walls like the more air you have around the symbol the better all right so um usually uh i would look for a uh, a ride symbol or a crash symbol, like with anthology, it's a multifunctional symbol, so we have both properties. Um, if I go at the symbol first, I would just strike it with my fingertips. I listen to the tones, you know, see uh, if, if it has the right hotness or the right complexity. Um, you know, whatever suits your taste, you know, um, see how the symbol behaves from just like opening up, up the body. Also step away from the symbol because it, the sound really changes when you're on top of it or if you take a, a few steps back. You will notice that you hear different tones if you uh, are at proximity or a little bit fur further away. All right, so let's uh, test some ride properties. Uh, like what I would really look for is that the stick never gets swallowed by the swell of, of the body, even if I play harder. So I always want to hear that uh, stick definition. When you test crash properties, 
I would do it with my fingertips first to see how quickly the, the cymbal will open. And then once you go at it with, with the stick, I see how the cymbal changes, if the tone changes, if it gets splashy, if I play it hard, or if it has a consistency in like tone throughout the dynamic spectrum. Always make sure to strike the cymbal at a glancing motion, like, like never hit it. Uh, you know, straight into the into the edge that that will hurt the symbol and it will also not sound good. All right, so now, what about if you compare symbols, not just one symbols, but like against mul multiple symbols? And we have a two or three symbols. So let me get a few symbols. Okay, so when you test multiple symbols against each other, one very important thing, make sure they're all in the same distance from the floor. This is not good because you're going to deal with reflection from the floor that's going to add to the impression that you have like the symbol. So make sure uh, you're, you're as close to like a, uh, uh, like a zero line. That's about right. All right, now, uh, Very important, also make sure that the symbols are not just on a, on a plain level, but also that they're all on the same type of surface. You know, if, if one symbol stand is on carpet and one symbol stand is on tile, evidently it's really going to affect the sound. Um, so that's one thing. Like once I zero in on a quality of a symbol that I like, you know, I will also uh, swap it because the stand very often has a big effect on the sound of a cymbal. Sometimes you will hear a tone or frequencies that, that might bother you and you might find out that it's actually the stand that produces the, those type of frequencies. Um, and talking about stands, very important. I always test cymbals on straight stands. Uh, boom stands vibrate much more and they create a life of their own that really uh, affects the way the cymbal sounds. Also another idea, I swap the stand sometimes, you know, to zero in, you know, that weird tone that you didn't like in one symbol. Make sure it's not coming from the symbol, but it might come from the stand. So these symbols are a little bit different. We have two anthology low bells and one anthology high bell which has a little bit more pr pronunciated high end definitely it's a little bit of a different color um, so which brings me to a very important and always or very often overlooked uh, subject you know you might look at a symbol or, or test it on the floor and it might sound really great and smooth and it happened to me before uh, you know I fell in love with like the silkiness and the smoothness and everything was 
pristine and, and nice, or it's just a really beautiful sounding instrument. Then I took it to play with, with the band, and it didn't project. So it kind of like, uh, sometimes you need a little bit tones that like pronunciate, like if a symbol is too sm uh, smooth, it might not cut through. So it's important to kind of anticipate what the symbol would sound like once you play it in music. And it doesn't matter if it's a, an acoustic piano trio or, or a metal band with like distorted guitars. Um, imagine what the symbol will perform once it's, it's uh, wrapped in music. And one good idea that helped me is, you know, you take some cotton, you know, like, you know, don't go crazy with it, just like a little bit fluffy, just to cut a little bit of the high end off, all right? And then I would test the cymbals again. So now I can hear what gets past the cotton will get past the music. It will get past the distorted guitar or whatever environment that it is. You know, it's just, uh, um, you know, take this a little bit out, you know, not as much. So, in the same way that a symbol might not, that sound really great, might not project inside the music, the opposite can also happen, that you hear some weird tones that, that you don't like, and what is this? And once it's in, inside the music, you know, it will be completely filtered away. As a matter of fact, often some of those tones give the symbol a little bit extra punch, you know. So, this takes a little bit of experience and stuff like that, but you know, just um, I'm telling you this that you understand that this can happen. Uh, that uh, maybe that weird tone might actually, after all, make the symbol unique and and help it project inside the music. Right? So, so there's a there's bad bad and there's also good bad, not just with symbols but uh, with everything. So. Um, the, another approach, if you don't have uh, cotton, I will close the ear that is facing the cymbal and see how the sound of the cymbal hits my other ear. Right? So you use all these techniques and see not what changes, but what stays the same. You know, you got to look for that say, okay, I do like this. No matter what I do, the symbol will just pronunciate itself and express itself that way. All right? So that, that's always a good uh, approach to, to zero in on your symbol. Another technique that I sometimes use, uh, especially when I look you know, for like a ride symbol for maybe jazz or like acoustic music. Um, I use open structure headphones uh, and I play along the music. You know, you can do it with any music, really. Uh, what I like to do is uh, I use old record, records of uh, Oscar Peterson trio, minus drums, which is like uh, with Herb Ellis and Ray Brown, great records or some, uh, uh, some old Nat, Nat King Cole records that Traditionally, didn't have a drummer, and I see how the sound of the cymbal sits inside the band. But you can do this with any style of music, uh, and and see how the cymbal behaves. You know, if it, if it adds something inspiring, if you if you can visualize that. All right. Now, um, another important thing is testing cymbals can be really straining. It's a lot of concentration and just you know, assign those frequencies and, and there's going to be ear fatigue. So just take a, take a break, you know, come back with fresh ears 
And uh, if you bring someone, if, if you have a friend, do some blindfold tests. I also do that, you know, like, because you want to make sure you pick the symbols from what you hear, not from what you see, right? Uh, so, you know, I have them swap them around and I go like, okay, this is the one. And sometimes it is su surprising uh, how much truth comes out in like a blindfold test. Ultimately, uh, if you put a symbol set together consisting of different symbols, uh, my main approach is to go for contrast and big intervals, like sonic contrasts. Uh, a lot of drummers, I think, make the mistake that they choose symbols which are too similar. You know, like, you know, you would have a 16-inch and a 15-inch crash that once you go at them, you know, pretty much will just sound like one symbol and it'll be mainly visual. So I always look for, for a symbol to make the music interesting too, to, to create highs and lows and, and darkness and, and, uh, uh, and, and highs to, to create that, that tension. Evidently, it's, it's a matter of taste also. And you're, you know, that, that's, uh, I will not interfere with, with that, but personally, this is the approach that I take when I put a set of drums, uh, of uh, cymbals together. Well, drums also as well, by the way. Um, all right, concluding, uh, I, uh, when you zero in on like the cymbal set you want, the one or two, take them to the drum set and play them in its natural habitat. Uh, this is especially true for hi-hats because um, the feel and the sound of a hi-hat, like the full impression, will usually not unfold unless you sit behind the kit and you know operate the pedal the way you normally do and not like standing, balancing on one foot. That's going to change the sound too. All right. These are my 50 cents when it comes to picking and choosing, testing a new symbol. Uh, it has served me well over the years and I hope it's useful information that's going to clarify things for you as well.